new in Python 3.12, we have the unpack type, which is used to give keyword arguments a much more specific signature. And in general, this is used with the typed dictionary. So to demonstrate how it works, I created a class called item, which inherits from the type dictionary. And then I created three attributes, one being a name of type string, a weight of type float, and a cost of type float. And that's going to be used to give our keyword arguments some sort of signature. So now we can create something called info, which is going to be a function. And inside here, we're going to add some keyword arguments. And that's going to be of type unpack. And here we need to pass in the type that we want to unpack, such as an item. And all this does is give our keyword arguments this signature here. And this function will return none. Then just to see how it works, we're going to print these keyword arguments. Now I'm going to create my normal if name is equal to main check and inside here, I'm going to call this function with the keyword arguments. So right now, according to what we wrote here, we must respect this signature. We must include a name, a weight and a cost. So if we do anything that's not related, such as, I don't know, let's type in banana equals one. And then we open up the terminal and run mypy. So we say mypy main.py. We're going to get an error. First, that this is an experimental feature. So I actually need to copy all of this and add it to the end. But first we'll get that there's an unexpected argument banana for info. So what we're going to do is just get rid of that and follow the signature that we have. Name is going to equal banana and the weight is going to equal, let's say two or three kilograms. It's a heavy banana. And I'm not going to finish it because I still want to show you what happens if we exclude one. So let's go back to our terminal, run mypy in experimental mode. And we're still going to get that we're missing the named argument cost for our info function. So it really wants us to adhere to this type. So now we're going to add the cost, which is going to be 10 euros because it's a heavy banana. And this time, if we run MyPy, everything's going to work perfectly. We followed the signature of the keyword arguments. But there is something else I want to show you because there might be a positional argument that shadows one of the names from your typed dictionary. And I'm going to show you what happens if we were to do that. Maybe your info function has a name, but also the keyword arguments has the name. So when you refer to name, which one is it going to use? Well, we can just run it and find out. And what you will see is that name was absorbed by the positional argument. So we didn't get to use all the keyword arguments. And you might be thinking, why don't we just insert banana or whatever name in front of it? Now this will take the positional argument and this will take the keyword arguments. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. It gets multiple values for the argument of name. So in the docs, I'm just bringing this up because you might run into this. It specifies that if you want to use the same name, you're going to have to use a slash to force this to be a positional argument. And I'm going to change this to something else such as test one. Now, if we run this, it will run perfectly fine. And I should show you also that we can use that name. So we'll type in name here and I'll add a separator of a colon and a space. So now if we run this, we're going to get test one plus the dictionary that we get from the keyword arguments. So just in case you have any names that clash between your data structure here and your positional arguments, just remember to force it by using this slash. Now, personally, I have no idea when I would force keyword arguments to follow a certain signature rather than just having some sort of data class structure to pass in. I personally don't know when I would use that. But just because I don't use something doesn't mean other people don't. So it's just good to know that we can now finally give proper type annotations with proper data structures to our keyword arguments if we need to. But anyway, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below whether you think this makes sense in your project or whether you think it's a complete waste of time. I would love to hear about that in the comment section down below. But otherwise, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.